understanding the tricky and subtle nature of evil. In 1973, the movie The Exorcist was created, and perhaps you've seen it. A young Linda Blair became physically possessed by dark influences after tinkering around with an old Ouija board she found. Now, before I go on a sidebar, and I want you to hear me closely, um, anyone, anyone listening to this with one of these boards, please dispose of it immediately and begin to cleanse and purify your home. These boards are sold in toy stores, and I'm convinced they're nothing more than a portal leading straight to hell, leading straight to hell and opening a gate between two worlds that cannot be easily closed Now back to the movie. Uh, In this movie, the little girl is so overrun with these evil influences, negativity, demons, whatever you want to call it, that her head spins around, she spits up green vomit, she levitates. And they call in a priest to come and exorcise these demons. And the movie was a sensation worldwide. And however these theatrics played out at the box office, they are not truly reflective of the stealth and sneaky nature of evil. Evil doesn't make a lot of noise upon entry because if it shocked and startled you, you may do something like call on God. So it's it's quite stealth and sneaky. And, and please understand that these dark influences operate in a far more subtle nature than Hollywood would have you believe. I know of a man who ended up estranged from his four children living on a farm with a prostitute. In the story, you hear it and it seems unremarkable. Was it not were it not for the fact that 10 years ago he was a successful accountant, happily married, planning to open his third office? He met a dancer one night at a friend's bachelor party. They exchanged numbers and began to meet up occasionally. Over the course of 10 years, this woman introduced him to drugs, stripped him of his money, and convinced him to buy her a small farm. You cannot make this stuff up. As he described it, I started to feel sick and weak physically, and then the feeling would lift. My mind would often race with bizarre thoughts. Then I would have a good day. The cycle went on. It was subtle. I didn't think much about it. I felt my intellect vanishing, and I started making stupid decisions. I never became alarmed because it was a subtle thing. Then when I started to wake up and walk back to God, my starting point was on a farm with a drug-addicted prostitute. It was a version of hell I never saw coming. And I have to tell you, in over 21 years of doing this work of elevation for, for people, there's hundreds of stories I could share Evil is dark and brilliant and magnificently diabolical in laying out plans to destroy and control you. I know of a woman who's sitting behind bars now. She had dedicated her life to helping abuse children and started a foundation. The money started pouring in. First, she began to dip into the donated funds to cover lunches and then specialty shopping items and then her mortgage. As she described it, When they put the handcuffs on, I didn't say a word because I couldn't recognize myself. Being vigilant about who you are, what you're thinking, guarding your relationship with God consistently is the ultimate protection against the sneaky nature of these dark influences. They are decidedly sneaky. And I'll say again, because if, if they were loud and blunt, you would immediately run to God and access would be denied them. An appropriate thing for the dark side would be be as quiet as a mouse and eventually the lion's roar of destruction will be unleashed upon them. Do not let it happen to you, my friend. If it already has, remain steadfast in prayer. Open your heart. Fill it every morning with love, good thoughts, do do good deeds, good gestures, and that will save you. Thank you so much. This has been Inspirational Shorts with Sheila. I'll connect with you soon.